Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today I'll be bringing to you a video going over my painting process. I'm no expert by any means, I don't think, but if you're able to glean some kind of instructional value from it, then that's awesome. I've been meaning to do this for a while now. And so from the beginning of this painting, I've just been documenting uh, the process. So a lot of what you're going to be seeing is time lapse or sped up video because there's no way that I can show you the 10 plus hours that it took me for this whole painting. And so I'll be voicing over a lot of it and explaining what I'm doing. And hopefully uh, it gives you some insight into how I create my artwork. And like I said, if this helps you to learn to be a better painter, uh, if you're interested in improving your skills, then that's awesome. And I really hope that it can help. So let's get started. I start out with a pencil sketch and I go over that sketch with some burnt umber or some brown black well, pretty watered down just to get an idea of what the composition is going to look like and so I can see what's going on or what's going to be going on to the painting um, no need to shade too much at this stage then once that's completed we start moving into the blocking in phase which is just covering things with color we begin with the background and then move forward so that's the first thing you'll see me putting in here is some background trees in the distance and the background is going to have more blue it's going to have more of an atmospheric tint to it so your greens are going to be things that you would expect to be green are going to be more blue than what you would more blue than if you were to see them up close And then I'm laying in some uh, gray, some off-white for the background, and then moving forward to the green meadow that's just behind the elk. And I'm not focused on detail at all at this stage, just covering the canvas, getting some fairly accurate representations of the colors that I want in the painting and you can kind of see uh, to the left of the screen that I'm referencing a photo. I actually referenced several photos for this painting. It's not just a copy of one single photo, it's kind of a composite of multiple ones, but whatever your reference is or whatever you have in mind, this first stage is just getting the uh, colors down. As far as what colors I'm using, um, my palette at this point consists of basically titanium white, some burnt umber, uh, brown black, ultramarine blue, sap green, and green light, permanent green light. So most of what you see at this point is some combination of those colors. The gray in the background is uh, it's white, ultramarine blue, and some burnt umber, I'm sure. I think I do have some yellow uh, mixed in with the green in the foreground and midground as well. So here pretty soon I'm going to start getting into things that are just a little bit more detailed. This is kind of my second pass. There's going to be a little bit more definition than in the block-in stage, but not a whole lot. So I'm still just kind of putting color in and deciding where things are going to be with these trees in the background. I'm really just covering up parts of the canvas with color. Not too worried about what the brush strokes look like right now. But uh, during some portions of it, I am using a flat brush. I think it's a one inch brush or something. Um, and kind of holding it vertically to get those uh, tree shapes in the back. So that continues on for quite a bit. Now I can start talking about some things with a little bit more definition. Right now, I'm going back over the trees in some darker colors to kind of get distinct, more distinct shapes of trees. And I'm using a, a bright 
brush here uh, holding it vertically to get those vertical tree shapes and I want to point out that there's a little bit of strategic positioning of these trees here in the background so if you'll notice where the antlers of the elk are going to be uh, coming out it's going to be standing against that background of trees and if if we had the antlers over the background of the lighter colored rocks they wouldn't stand out as well so that's the reason I have that big stand of trees there is really so that we can uh, make the antlers more distinct and make them stand out at this point I'm putting in the shadows for the background for the rocky background and all I'm doing is mixing some ultramarine blue some burnt umber and some white together to get these shadows they should they shouldn't be harsh shadows in the background yet because they're going to be washed out by the atmosphere and then uh, we'll go back over these later with highlights and so I'm also going to put in shadows for the trees so as if the light source were coming up from the top right almost overhead but these shadows accentuate the slope of the uh, of the face and they also just add some interest to the painting So I feel like the background, uh, there's not much more for me to say about that. It's really starting to drag on. Uh, just some final words about it is I did add some highlights to the rocks in the background and all I have to say about that is just make sure they're not too bright. Don't use pure white, especially not for the background because nothing in the back needs to uh, stand out that much. You need to reserve the lightest lights for uh, the foreground and for very specific strategic details. Um, also, as far as the trees go, uh, I did add some highlights just sparingly to the background trees, just enough to show that there's distinct, distinct trees out there. Right here I'm just beginning to put some highlights on these mid-ground rocks and as I've said hinted at a couple times before is that you would just want to make sure that these highlights aren't too strong. Um, the surrounding colors are going to make the highlights look bright. You don't need to put a bunch of white in the paint or in your mix to make, to make it look bright. Now I'm just adding some mid-ground vegetation here and I'm really not trying to be too detailed with it and I leave this mid-ground pretty loose and don't really worry about overworking the canvas and making things look too muddy just laying the paint down leaving it there and not trying to do too much with it really
I'm moving into some highlights on the midground, and I'm playing this in real time just so you can kind of see how it unfolds uh, in normal speed. And once again, I'm not really spending a lot of time in one area, like making a huge effort to be detailed. But you lay these colors down and just leave them there and they leave the scene open to suggestion and it makes your mind work uh, to unfold the scene and it makes it a little bit more interesting. And you can kind of see how not trying to put too much detail in leads to an interesting look. You can kind of see the grass with the highlights and you can imagine what that is. You can see what's going on there without trying to like paint individual blades of grass or anything like that. Now in moving to working on the elk, we're making more of an effort to add some detail um, to bring the elk forward to make it stand out compared to the background which is a little bit more loose. So we're going to add some tighter details here and I'm beginning to add highlights. The elk kind of has a, its mane, its fur on its neck has a reddish tint to it so I'm using some uh, burnt sienna for that part. And one thing that I want to make note of is that it's not really that important the exact colors and hues on my palette. You really just have to practice and learn to achieve the color that you're looking for with any variety of different colors. There's You can achieve the same results with an infinite uh, combination of colors or uh, palette choices. You just have to practice and learn how it all works together. So in engineering we talk about robustness and the ability to achieve the same output for a variety of inputs. So I try to be a robust artist, you know, <laughs> be able to achieve the, the same look, the same uh, colors with any variety of different palettes. You don't want to be real sensitive to change and you want to be adaptable, really, or at least I do. These details are some of the most enjoyable part of uh, creating the painting. Uh, adding these highlights here really makes, makes things stand out and it really feels good to see things come to life. So right here, I'm just being really careful not to add anything too overwhelming or too bright, but light enough to really make things pop here. And it's really fun. Makes the fur look really nice. I don't think there's really a whole lot for me to say about these details on the elk. I was referencing a photo, so that's why I keep looking at over on the left. And I don't know what else to say except just that I was just trying to really take my time and not rush this and uh, make sure I got the little details right and move slow enough to not get frustrated because that's one of the biggest enemies of producing a good painting or really uh, doing good work in life in general I would say it's just not getting frustrated and so I, I'll just let this play through a little at about four or eight times faster than a normal speed and you can just see the process that I went through to add the details on the elk here
And at this point, I'm starting to map out where the antlers are going to be. First with pencil, but that didn't really work. That wasn't really dark enough. So I switched over to some watered down uh, burnt umber or uh, brown black or something just to get the outline, map out where everything should be. And I went ahead and filled it in a little bit darker than it needed to be. And so then moving over here onto the, the elk's right antler, doing the same thing. And then here's where I start to fill in basically what I've outlined and I'm starting dark to light so I want to start with the colors a little bit darker than what they need to be and I'm gonna add highlights in later as we go so this is the fun part we're starting to really make the elk look like a bull elk now and uh, fill things in add some antlers One of the biggest tips I can give here is, for me, I just really, really try not to rush it. Because, I mean, if you mess up here, it's pretty difficult to fix it. Um, it's hard to cover it up, and it's not easy to wipe it off either. So, just being very methodical and deliberate with every brush stroke uh, is the best thing to do at this point. At this point I'm finished with the elk and I don't really touch it after that. So I'm moving into some of the vegetation around the elk and moving farther into the foreground. And I'm using a fan brush here and with really thin paint I'm watering it down and just pulling the fan brush up to create some well the effect of blades of grass and now here I'm going in with a liner brush and painting in individual blades of grass and so I'm going to slow it back down to normal speed so where you can kind of see what I'm doing here and I'm just loading this liner brush up with paint um, with like highlight color and uh, thinning it just a little bit so it flows well and, and just putting in those little blades of grass. And I'm mixing up the warmer and cooler greens as you can see 
and I'm trying to bring this part of the painting forward closer to the viewer so a lot of these blades of grass up above the grass line uh, that distinction that detail it really makes it look like this part of the grass is in front of that meadow that sits behind the elk and it's a really it's a nice touch to help with some depth and detail and so I move down to the next layer of grass and do the same thing including kind of letting some of those blades of grass blades of grass stick up above the uh, the average height of the grass I guess you could say So I'm continuing to add some of this foreground detail with the grass and I'm trying to think of a few tips to give. Uh, don't make these blades of grass like too uh, distinct. They don't need to be too much brighter than what's around them otherwise it just looks unrealistic. And also in addition to some of these highlights I'm adding some uh, darker plates of grass that might lie in the shadows and also uh, some warmer colors, some uh, cooler colors and varying it because uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot going on in the grass and you want to try to capture that. And so I, a few times I go back over the areas with the fan brush again. And so at this point I'm kind of bouncing around the painting and working on different areas simultaneously which is perfectly fine if you want to do that you don't have to stay in one area and especially if you get bored or frustrated with one part of the painting move on to the next one and uh, usually turns out better that way so that's what I'm doing here going back and forth between the water and the grass And really the process for putting in the grass in the foreground doesn't change for the rest of the painting. Uh, there's not a whole lot more I can say about it. I do save the lightest parts, the um, most distinct blades of grass, I guess, for the end. As you'll see, I kind of go over layer by layer and end with uh, the brightest colors. So I'll just let you watch. That was always uh, the most helpful thing for me to do when learning to paint was just watch other people paint on YouTube and on TV. And that, that's how I did a lot of my learning. So I'll just leave the rest of the uh, foreground grass for you to watch. Okay, at this point I must have knocked my camera out of focus or something, so it's going to be blurry from pretty much the rest of the video, but I still think there's something to be gained from watching it if you'd like to, so stick around if you want. If not, skip to the end and you can see what the final result looks like.
Okay, this is another pretty fun part, which is adding some of the water effects and reflections. So I'm just taking a flat brush and uh, putting in horizontal lines, I guess you could say, uh, just on the edge of the reflection. And I'm adding some vertical lines, just kind of squiggling them as I come down for the reflections of the blade of grass. And after that, I start moving into the elk. Uh, it's antlers reflecting in the water and I'm using a similar technique I'm just kind of getting a uh, rough idea of the shape of the antlers and just kind of squiggling the lines down and it just has the effect of ripples and it works out really nicely you have it uh, a nice crisp video of the final product here and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to be posting something else uh, before too long. So, see you then.